inspired on Liberty Radio. Good evening and welcome to Be Inspired. I believe that in every service that you attended in all our churches, I'm absolutely certain that the Holy Spirit spoke to you. In fact, the Holy Spirit has been using Bishop Macedo to speak about this message about those who are born of the flesh and those who are born of the Spirit. And before we speak about that, let us just spare a thought for a teacher who had no idea who he was talking to. <laughs> a teacher who had no idea that he was talking to the teacher of teachers, Nicodemus. Nicodemus was perhaps one of the most respected rabbis, one of the most respected religious teachers in Israel at that time. However, when he approached the Lord Jesus, he, he had some kind of understanding that he was indeed a teacher, but he didn't know that he was the Son of God, the source of all wisdom and knowledge. And we can see that our God is a God of wisdom, a God of knowledge. Actually, the Bible describes the Spirit of God, one of the attributes of the Spirit of God is the Spirit of knowledge, which is what teachers uh, impress on their students. They deliver a knowledge that uh, is up until that point unknown to them in most cases. And we can say that a teacher has a job that is in line with what the Lord Jesus did to deliver knowledge to those who are under their responsibility. This Sunday, if you're a teacher, a coach, if you are, um, when we say coach, uh, let me just say here, we're talking about you who are a coach, like a sports coach, uh, we're not really talking about motivational speakers, right, or those kind of coaches. We're talking about you, for example, we, we can even include, we have uh, people in our in our church who are driving instructors. Oh, yes. In a way, they are teaching also, right? So whatever your job is, if it includes that facet of teaching, then this Sunday we are going to bless you on the altar and we probably will not be able to fit all the students on the altar, but surely we are going to bring you the students close to the altar so that you can also receive this blessing. But I would like to talk here to the pastors and to you at home about what we were discussing today, what it means to be born of the Spirit and to be born of the flesh. Bishop Macedo, I think he put it in a very uh, easy way to understand. He said that those who are born of the Spirit, they think, they reason, and those who are born of the flesh, they are led by emotions. And we see, um, for example, today's Wednesday we spoke about this topic, and it's a day we usually seek the Holy Spirit. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you've noticed that over the past few years, the church has matured a lot. We, we're bit by bit diverting from. Uh, you know, singing a lot of songs and jumping up and down a lot in the services because a lot of the crowds that used to be engaged in this singing and jumping up and down and, and, and who cried in moments of singing certain songs in the church, a lot of these people are not in the church anymore because they were never born of the Spirit. That emotion that they experienced was an emotion that had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. And this is why when people say to us in the fast of Daniel or after a service where they had a powerful experience, where they cried and they say, Bishop, today I received the Holy Spirit, we have to wait. Because you only see if someone is born of the Spirit or not 
after a certain time, you know, only time will tell if that person is really born of God. For example, when a baby is born, uh, and please don't be offended with what I'm going to say, but all babies look more or less the same, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, with a certain, with a few differences. But as the baby gets a little bit older and turns into a toddler and then uh, a young child and you, you will start to see whether they look more like the mom or the dad. Spiritually speaking, is the same. A person can come to us and say, Bishop, tonight was the night that I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And amen for that. We, we don't doubt. But we cannot base whether a person is born of the Spirit or not based on an experience that they've had. But the time that will come afterwards will show whether that person really was born of God. Because if they were, their actions are going to show that. When a person is born of the Spirit, they can control their temper. So if a member in the church says, I am baptized with the Holy Spirit, but they lose their temper with another member in the church, and they argue with that person, you know, fight with that person, this is a sign that they are not led by reasoning, by the Spirit. They are led by the flesh, emotions. Uh, if the person, for example, adopts a lot of the trends of the world to dress in an inappropriate way, in, because, you know, we have, to, we have to, to say the following. Should we really be telling, should we be telling men or women in the church that they shouldn't be getting a tattoo? Should we be saying that? We shouldn't be saying that because if the person is full of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal this to them. Honestly, do you, if you, if you think that Jesus would be here today, do you think Jesus would be covered in tattoos? Do you think he would be worried about getting a tattoo? Would that be money well spent? Is that how your body should be covered? When a person is born of the Spirit, they don't take on a trend just because everybody else is doing it. No, Bishop, but everyone, you know, there's many Christians nowadays who, you know, men who dye their hair certain colors, who, who get tattoos, who dress like this. Bishop, now is normal. But this is where the difference is. Those who are born of God, they do not adopt the, the trends of the world. And if someone has to tell you, if someone has to be pointing out to you that you shouldn't be doing something, that is already a sign that the person is not born of God. You know, there are some people in the world that they're known to have a mind of their own. Some people say, no, this person, he has a mind of his own. When we are born of God, we have a mind not necessarily of our own because we have the mind of Christ and we don't follow others. That person that has a mind of his own, he's firm on his decisions, he's firm on what he, he does. And when a person is born of God, they have the mind of Christ, so they don't follow what other people are doing. They don't follow the trends of the world and they don't need to be told as you're saying because they have the mind of Christ. The world may say that person has a mind of his own but this person hears the voice of God directly inside of them and God tells them how they should be. For example, when I've given here my example before that, um, you know, when I had an encounter with God, I went home and I took all my heavy metal records and I broke them. And I even said here, I even broke the records that belonged to my brother. And he was quite upset about that. I shouldn't have done that. But I was so determined in my decision that I did that. I had this uh, heavy metal thing in my mind that I dressed in a way that wasn't appropriate for a person of God. I only wore black. I, I didn't wear black because that's the only clothes I had available to me. That I, it was a choice that I made. And the pastor never told me, let go of your heavy, heavy metal records, change the way you dress. He never told me that. But when a person is born of God, the Holy Spirit convinces the person of those things. So when you see, and, and this is a very spiritual thing, when you are in spirit, you don't need to be told what is expected of you, how you have to behave. Because 
the Holy Spirit that is inside of you, He shows you, look, it's not good that you speak like this. It's not good. You know, we've heard so many testimonies of people who said, look, I used to dress provocatively, but the Holy Spirit made me feel uncomfortable with those clothes that I was wearing. The pastor didn't tell them, uh, stop wearing these clothes. It was the Holy Spirit. And when the person is in spirit, Pastor David, when the person is born of the Spirit, then they hear God speaking to them, not audibly, but there is this conviction of the Holy Spirit saying, this is not the way to go. You shouldn't be doing this. And, and we have people in the church, we've been in the church for a long time, who still are not born of the Spirit, born of God. How do we know they are not? Because we, we only need to look at the way they speak, the way they deal with certain problems, the way they react to certain people stepping on their toes, they lose their temper. All these things are signs of a person who is still in the flesh. Because when the person is born of God, Bishop, people, they, they have a certain way of behaving that's led by God. We have the example of Abraham. Who told Abraham that he needed to, to be a faithful tither, for example? No one told Abraham. There was no law at the time. You know, no one, well, God didn't say uh, um, directly in the law, go and present your tithe. But Abraham had that inside of him. I must be faithful to God. I must put God first. When a person is really born of God, they don't need somebody to tell them, you need to do this, you need to stop doing this, you need to stop doing this. Because inside of them, they have the Spirit of God who speaks to them and directs them according to the way they need to live. Yeah. So you need uh, this message that we heard today is for you to look at yourself, examine yourself. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, examine yourself that you are indeed in the faith because no one can examine you. When you go to a doctor, there are machines that the doctor has available to him that examine everything about your organs, about your brain, about your, your insides, everything. But spiritually speaking, there isn't such a machine. But we have the Word of God. And I, I hope you, you really understand that those who are born of God and those who are not, there has to be a difference. Actually, the Bible says this. There will be a difference between those who serve God and those who don't. You have to be able to look at a person who is born of God and through their behavior and, and everything, including their appearance, you have to be able to see that the person is born of God. Unfortunately, we have people who insist on saying this even though they know it's not true. People who are living in sin, but they say they have the Holy Spirit. People who adopt the trends of the world, but they say they have the Holy Spirit. But as the Bible says, light and darkness do not mix. If out of the same fountain, you cannot have uh, sweet and salty water or bitter water. We can't be half born of God and half born of uh, the Spirit. Otherwise, you would have a spiritual Frankenstein, right? <laughs> you, you can't have a, a spiritual Frankenstein. You are either one or the other. And, and this message is for us to examine ourselves and see, for example, one of the, a, a very good way for a person to see if they're born of God, Pastor Joseph, yes. is for the person to see where they find their pleasure. What, what gives you pleasure? What makes you happy? Do you find happy to sit down with the Bible and read the Word of God and ask God to speak to you? Do you find pleasure to come to the church? Do you find pleasure to renounce the desires of your flesh because you know that it brings you closer to God? If you find pleasure in these things, this is a sign that you are hopefully born of God. But if, if you find pleasure in the trends of the world, in adopting what everybody else in the world does, if you find pleasure in revenge, if you find pleasure in pointing fingers at people and finding flaws in people, this is a sign that a person is uh, still, even after being in the church for a long time, they are still in the flesh. See, the, we have now the, the purpose of 100 days. 
it's a it's a very good opportunity for the person to invest and read the Bible, to read a book, you know, to invest themselves. So if they see this a pleasure, they'll have no problem. They're gonna be marking the calendar every day. They're gonna be marking and and, and put their cell phone into it because they see it's important. I was thinking, Bishop, before the person is born of God, they may see themselves in a different way in front of a mirror. After the person is born of God, they, they cannot feel okay with their old clothing in front of a mirror again. It's like now they see themselves, they need to see God when they look, in, when they look themselves in front of a mirror. The reflection must be God, cannot be their old person. I used to have, uh, you said um, that you bro broke all the, the records. I used to have those dark clothes as well from, from rock and roll and things. I remember I throw everything they been and I asked my grandpa's his clothes. I used to go every day to, until I buy all the clothing, I used to go with my grandpa's clothes because I don't want to look that anymore. I imagine there was a sight to behold. <laughs> <laughs> a young man wearing his grandfather's clothes. Go. But this is it. And you know, I, I think it's important those who are born of God, they understand the following. We need to ask ourselves, for example, when you put on clothes in the morning, when you're about to make a decision, what haircut to, 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 to have. You know, if you're a guy and you're gonna wear an earring or not, if you're gonna go and get a tattoo or not, ask yourself, what would the Lord Jesus do? Do you really think that if He was here today, if He were here today, that this is what he would be worried about. Do you think Jesus would be worried? Let me let me go and get a piercing. Let me go and get a tattoo. Let me go in and let me go to a barber and, and do this crazy hairstyle. Do you really think this is what the, the Son of God would be worried about? He he had so many more things to to be thinking about. The salvation of his disciples, the preaching of the gospel, making disciples so they could take the, the Word of God all over the world. Imagine, imagine if he would be worried with the things of the flesh. And so we have among us, even until today, people who are in the church and they are concerned about taking the gospel out to everyone as much as possible. And we have others who are uh, still in the flesh. And just for us to finish this, to give an example, was Nicodemus born of the flesh or born of the Spirit? Well, by the answer that he gave, you can see that he was born of the flesh. When Jesus said a man had to be born again, Nicodemus' answer was, can a man go back to his mother's womb? You couldn't, you couldn't be more in the flesh if you tried. That's an answer of someone who was in the flesh. Like we we were reading, uh, I think we were speaking in, in, I think it was in the study of the book of Revelation here on Sunday night uh, or, or Sunday morning, that when the Lord Jesus spoke about the leaven of the Pharisees, the bread, the disciples thought He was talking about bread because they forgot to bring bread. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Because at that time they were still not born of the Spirit, they were still born of the flesh. And when you're born of the flesh, for example, the person who is born of the flesh and they're sitting in a service and a pastor is preaching something, they think the pastor is speaking about them, right? Or, uh, and, and the list goes on. But when you are born of the Spirit, you, you understand the things of God in a spiritual way. I hope that the Holy Spirit really spoke to you. Listen, uh, tonight, tonight at midnight, instead of us praying here right now, tonight at midnight, um, we are going to be doing a prayer at midnight because we are starting tomorrow, Thursday, we are starting this purpose with uh, someone to agree with us in prayer. We ask people to write their problem and to find someone else to agree with them in prayer, someone who doesn't come to the church. And we will be doing three days of prayer and fasting, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. We are going to present our three days of prayer and fasting tonight at midnight. And you can do 
this prayer by yourself. You can set your alarm clock, five to midnight, and do a prayer there that God will use you as an instrument to reach out to someone, to join your faith with that person, and you will be helping them solve their problem. You'll be solving your own problem because someone is joining their faith with you, and in the process, you will be saving a soul as well. And if you were not born of the Spirit, if you realize through today's message that you were still born of the flesh, only you can solve that problem. It's a hundred percent of your life that you need to give so that He can cause this regeneration in you. Okay? May God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. Bye-bye. If you'd like to donate in support of this work, please do so by any of the following ways. Via online banking using our details on screen. Through the QR code which will take you to the payment page on our website. Or you can gift aid your donation writing through the email address on screen. Thank you for your help.